In this tutorial, we're going to go over how to get a detailed engraving from any image using a Vectric program and an I2R CNC. So let's get started. Best recommendation for starting out with something like this is to get a high contrast image. So that just means having uh, no midtones, just having full black and full white as your options. So for this example, I'm using a King of Hearts playing card image, but I just looked up uh, King of Hearts black and white and I found one that's full black and full white. So if you'd like to use that one you can use that image as well otherwise just grab whatever other uh, full contrast image that you'd like. So first step is you're going to open up your Vectric program set your uh, dimensions that's going to be based off of whatever material that you're using so it might be a bit different than me I'm just doing three inches by 4.2 inches Set your Z0 position. I recommend doing material surface for engravings just because it gives you a lot more accurate reference of where the surface of your material is. And then everything else is just personal preference. So now that you have your project, go up into File and then do Import and Import Bitmap. That will open up your Finder window where you can select the image that you have downloaded. Once you select that, it'll auto-import into your project, and you'll notice that you can tell whether it's selected or not based off whether it grays itself out. When it's kind of grayed out, that means it's deselected. When it's full contrast, that means that you have it selected. Also, make sure that this is a high-quality image. You can tell just by zooming in that this one is fairly high-quality. It's definitely not super pixelated, and that just helps uh, translate to vectors a lot more easily. So make sure it's selected and then mouse over to the left of your screen under create vectors. You'll see a little bird image. That's the trace bitmap feature. So when you click on that, you'll open up a window uh, that gives you two options at the beginning. It's either color or black and white. So you'll notice with color, it gives you a lot of different tones. It's a bit weird since this is a full black and white image. It's kind of making up for some things, but if you were using something with multiple colors, that's how you'd select individual colors that you wanna isolate for vector outlines. But for this purpose, just do black and white. That slider on the bottom is the sensitivity. So it's what is registered as black and what is registered as white. You'll see that if I bring it all the way to the max, it auto fills a lot of the white as black. So you just want to find a happy medium and you can tell by what's black in the outline of where your setting is. Once you get that set correctly, scroll down and you can hit preview just to see what the uh, automatic features are and what it's going to outline. This one did a pretty good job of following the lines. When you zoom up close, don't freak yourself out if it's not exactly along the outline. You have to remember that a lot of this is getting translated to an organic piece of material, so you're not going to get infinite detail anyway. But as long as it's along the lines and it looks right when you zoom out, you should be fine. So for something like this here, this little square, that's just noise created by some of the pixels and it might mess up or prolong your cut unnecessarily. So you can change that by the second option you see in this lower section, noise filter. Right now it's only set to two pixels, but if we crank that up a bit and then preview again, you'll notice that that small square goes away. So that's just a great feature for really cleaning up some of your traces. After that, you can just do a general scan of your image to make sure that everything's translating well to vectors and that you don't have any big issues. If there are some cornering issues, you can always clean that up with node editing, but it seems like that's not going to be necessary for this design. One thing you can try to clean up beforehand is to use the corner fit option. So that just defines how tightly your vector is going to go along the pixels. If you crank it all the way up to tight, you'll get very rigid lines, which isn't great because a lot of this is a very curved surface. So we want to keep it kind of in the middle, if not more towards the loose side. Once you're happy with all your settings, you can click apply and that will bring you out back to your editing window and you'll notice you now have a vector outline of your object. With the vector outline selected, open up your toolpaths and you're just going to make a V-carve toolpath as you would any other toolpath. So based off what bits you have, that's going to define what settings you do here. I'm using a 30 degree V-bit just because it's going to give me a lot tighter detail than a 60 degree or a 90 degree V-bit. And I might choose to use clearance tools just to save me some time in bigger sections like the hearts next to the head or something like that. But it's not necessary. So once you have the settings the way that you want them to be, just make sure that you label your toolpath correctly and then press calculate and you'll see the preview screen pop up. 
preview your toolpath just to make sure everything's looking good. You'll notice there are a lot of those little lines. That's due to the step over, but there's not much you can do to eradicate those in the preview. And you'll notice when you cut, those don't actually show up because of how minuscule they are. If you're satisfied with your preview, then you're going to go ahead and save your toolpath as you would any other. From there, you just run the toolpaths as you would anything else on your CNC. One tip I can give you is for detailed engravings like this, I definitely would recommend considering what kind of wood you're using and how you orient the wood. So at first I tried a face grain carving on a piece of maple for this cut and it was a bit too detailed and I got a lot of blowout and chip out. So then I tried just flipping the same piece of maple up to be end grain instead of face grain and that was able to retain the details a lot better. So things to think about when you're doing detailed engravings like this. And honestly, after I did the end grain, I'm very pleased with the results and it has very finite details. So if you have any ideas for V-carves like this or converting any images, put them in the comments. Make sure that you follow for more tips and I can't wait to see what you guys make. Have a good one.